now as a guide what do you need to have as a guide one things that you need to care important things that you need to care one is the binoculars unfortunately i'm not i, I don't have my binoculars with me is the binoculars you need to have that binoculars. that tool has to be all the time on your waist or on your around your neck carry your binoculars whenever you go even not on safari if you walk from the main area to the to, to the staff houses or you are on maintenance or you are on anything make sure that you have your binoculars that tool is very important it will enhance and help you improve your sight some of the animals you are not going to get them unless you have binoculars most importantly when it gets to birds for you to admire and be able to identify your best, you need to be clear. So as a guide, you need to have those. If you don't have, make sure that you ask them from the from the manager or from your fellow guide. Okay? Because you don't want a situation where you are struggling to see an animal, then you ask your 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 your, your clients for for, for for binoculars. You could do that, but that's not a good reputation. They will ask themselves, this is a guide, he go out with clients every day, but he doesn't have a binoculars. Okay? And even before you go, ask them whether they have taken anything that they need. You find that some of them forget their camera, some of them forget their binoculars. If they forget something, please advise them to be little rush to their rooms to get them because they are going to need them. So, another thing as a guide that you have to use is what we call a leatherman or a, a Swiss knife or a multi tool knife. You know, it comes in different forms and in different names. But here in Botswana, it's well known to be a leatherman. A leatherman is a multi-tool kind of knife. It comes with a knife and sometimes it opens, which you open it like this, you get um, uh, pliers or pinches. On the side it got a knife, it got a saw, it got some tin openers, it got some cork screws and stuff like that. It's a multi-purpose knife, it comes in, in a small packages, but it have so many useful tools in it. Make sure as a guide you have that. Okay, make sure you have a leather man on you. Normally, you see a lot of guys have kept them here. So, a leather man will save a lot of stuff. You find that when you're driving, a, a, a branch is protruding on the road, and there's nothing you can cut out, cut it out with you. Get your leather man, you take out the saw, you cut the branch out. You are struggling to open a champagne bottle or a wine bottle, you don't have a corkscrew. You take out the leather man, you use the corkscrew. So it's a very very useful tool and you, now on top of that as a guide you need to make sure that you have uh, reference books you know not really that the reason why i say reference books is that so many books on safari either plants animals mammals birds we use them as reference don't attempt to read the whole bed book or don't attempt to read the whole plants book because you are not going to come out with anything but rather use them as reference okay so for your own information just carry that along and make sure that while you are on drive you don't refer everything to the book because it seems like you are an unknowledgeable guide and you don't know what 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 you are doing use them as reference use them when there is a debate amongst the group because sometimes you can say that's a wooden kingfisher then they said no it doesn't look like from other guests that argument is normally solved by a guide opening a guide and show it to the people and there are some animals that you are not going to to be able to see or your clients are able to see before you even show them on the picture there's so many skittish animals that you can see M maybe a slender mongoose normally they will stop and cross the road quickly so a guide will help you to open a book so that your clients can appreciate that better. You understand? So that's what you need to have as a guide all the time. Another uh, additional equipment that you need to have is a camera. But if you don't have a camera, it's fine. You have it in the future. So what a camera does is that you can take pictures of the things that you struggle to identify. Let's say you struggle to identify a bird and you have managed to take a picture of it. Or you have... Um, uh, struggle to identify a certain flower you have taken a picture of it it becomes easy after the drive when you are seated and you are opening your your guide to try and identify whatever you have taken photo of so it is very important for you um, to have a camera but if you don't have a camera still it's fine okay but make sure that you work on getting one now you are going out 
your cruiser or your Land Rover is ready, you are ready to go out on safari. Um, normally, according to my experience, I, I used to use my intuition, or otherwise, maybe if some guys on camp have guided me to say they've seen a lion kill or the wild dogs have killed something in so and so place, then I could check there in the morning first because they are more likely to be um, around there and uh, they are more likely to be hanging nearby that place. But if you don't know, if you haven't heard of anything, then use your intuition as a guide, you know. If you get to the main road, whether you have to go right, whether you have to go left, use your intuition and use your field experience. Because the bush will talk to you. That's one skill that you need to develop. The bush will talk to you. The bush will show you some signs, you know, some pointers that can lead you to, to sightings. But that, all in all, you are going to talk about it on a separate video. The pointers that you have to look at when you're in the bush. You know, the hints that are going to lead you to, to, to either to a leopard, to a lion, or to a snake, or to whatever. There are pointers. If you get through such hints, you should be able to read what they are saying to you. So now, um, and you should make sure that your car has a radio as well. So the radio, we use it, and you need to be very cautious with the radio because you don't want to be a guide that is guided by what is said on the radio. Make sure you show your guest that you can, you can apply your skills, you can apply your knowledge, you can apply your instincts on where to go. You don't want to show them that you are being led by the radio. But the radio on the car, it will help you or it will lead you to fruitful sightings, which is very good or it will help you to for you to communicate with camp in case of emergency so you need to have a radio on board so while on a game drive another factor that you really really have to look at is your speed the speed that you drive with man as a guide me as a guide uh, i made sure that unless <laughs> there is a situation that you know will force me to drive at, at, at a higher speed, but a higher speed I mean 40 kilometers per an hour. Mostly I'll drive at 20 kilometers per an hour, 25 kilometers per an hour. Because if you drive fast, you are going to concentrate more on the road. And you are a guide, you are on a game drive, you are looking around, you are looking down, you are looking up, you are looking everywhere in an attempt to find something fruitful to, 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 to your guest. So your speed is very important drive at a very slow speed that will allow you to look out for a few minutes without having worried that if the car goes up the road you'll be able to get it you understand so don't drive fast unless a situation permits that you need to drive a bit faster but otherwise maintain a very slow slow